typically, you just don't want to touch other people's poop. And I said it, right? We, you don't want to touch someone else's number two. You just, that's just not, it's, it's a cultural thing. It's like global. It's at every country. You just don't touch other people's poop. But your baby, right, when it's your child, well, you actually don't want to touch it either, right? But, but you don't shy away from it. You don't, you don't go looking for it, but, but you're not afraid of it when it comes. You know, it's interesting, being a new father and new parents, we've had, and, and we've heard these stories before, it's just a matter of time until she poops on you. And, uh, and it happened really early on, right? And, and I've seen what it's like where, where we're changing, and a diaper is so full, and I'm so sorry that I, you know, I hope that I'm not grossing you guys out, but, but this is the truth of the matter. This is the truth of life. You were here at some point, and someone had to do this for you. Where a diaper was so full that you didn't know what to do with it, and it's just spilling everywhere. And I just see Faye reaching and just with any part of her to, to catch anything that she can catch to protect the baby from this cascade of poop. You know, and we're just sitting there, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> right? It's crazy. It's wild. Right? But, but it, there was no hesitation. I mean, if it was someone else's poop, I would throw that thing across the room and be like, ah! You know? Right? But when it's your child, you're just like, oh, well, you just dive even. You know, like, let it hit me on the head, you know, like, whatever. You just take it. But that's love, Right? It's love when, 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 when we experience the mess in each other's lives and we, we don't back down, right? And, and, and we have tough times and Mary's like, no, I'm going to be there. And you're suffering, you're dying, and everyone says you're wrong, but I'm, and even if you are wrong, I'm still here. Man, do we love like that? There are things that cause us to pull back. To pull back. Uh, I think they make us uncomfortable because they're inconvenient. It's, it makes it harder to help out when we have to go out of our way. Do you have a love that only loves people when they come to you? Or do you come to people where they are? Because that's what Jesus shows us here, right? He came down from heaven to be on that cross, a place of tremendous comfort. Do we have a love that meets people where they are, that changes who we are in order to love them? Do we love beyond the boundaries of our schedules? Right? In other words, if, if, it need, if a need is there and it requires us to change our schedule, to change what we, we planned on doing, vacations, sports, or whatever, do we love so that we, we change our schedules? Or do we only love up to, you know what, I have up to this time and that's all I can love. And again, I'm not saying there's some times where there's no other opportunity, but do we love past our schedules whenever we can? Do we love beyond the goals of our personal finances? In other words, if needs require us to change our financial goals, are we willing to reassess our finances to help someone else out? Are we willing to seek advice for this type of situation? I'm not asking you to do it blindly or do it crazy, but are we willing to have that conversation, or is that not even an option? Do we love beyond our own personal opinions? Getting advice rather than just doing what we want. You know, the challenging thing with getting advice before you help out in a situation is now I got to think about a second perspective. Then I got to evaluate it. Then I got to think if I really want to do it. Then I got to think of it. It's harder. Man, but do we love enough to get input and advice? You know, do we love beyond the comfort of our gifts? There are many needs around us. And I think loving through, just through our gifts, right, can, be, can mean like, you know what, this is what I'm good at and I'm not doing anything else. I can see other needs, but I'm not good at that, so I'm just not going to do it. Or do we decide to, you know what, I'm going to learn how to do this. I, mean, I appreciate the tech crew. Not a single one of them are AV experts, but somehow they're standing behind their operating screens, setting up projectors. Right? I appreciate our children's ministry. They are not professionals at taking care of children, but you would think they have some PhD in organizing our children's ministry because that was a need and they stepped into it. Our teen workers, well, actually most of them are teachers, but they're still incredible because after working with children all day, they handle other kids that are not their own. And serve, because that was a need. Were they good at it? Some of them, maybe. Some of them, not. I'm not trying to evaluate them or whatever. But they stepped into a need. It's not about the perfection of meeting all these needs. It's the heart and willingness to pursue them. It takes us back to point number one, right? To, to take the focus off of myself. Let me just do something. God will make it great. We got to stay committed through the drama of each other's faults, shortcomings, unfavorable and inconvenient circumstances. And Je Jesus demonstrates a powerful example of love here. He too loves and considers others during a time that's inconvenient for him. 